In front of you is a yellow string. Yellow, so you can see a little better. On the left hand side we have some masses. We have a specific mass, and the reason we have masses over here, a specific mass, is to have a tension, and to have a consistent tension that should not change when we do this little experiment, this demonstration. Over here we have a, a, an oscillator. This item right here is going to go up and down depending on how many little electrons go through it. This is a giant adjustable battery, essentially. It's going to change, I can adjust the current, which will change the number of electrons going through it, which will basically change the amount of energy, and therefore the, how often this goes up and down, or the frequency of that oscillation. So what happens? It goes up and down, sends a wave pulse down the string. That wave pulse runs into this end, which is fixed, and therefore we have reflection with inversion. So this wave pulse is going to come back. But then, we're going to have another wave pulse coming from here, so we're going to have a wave pulse coming and a wave pulse reflecting with inversion, and we're going to have interference of all of those wa waves. So we're going to have interference via superposition on this uh, string, because we're going to have a whole bunch of waves going back and forth the whole time. So, I will turn it on. We can adjust. And we can get various things happening. So, at certain frequencies, we can get something like this happening, which is called a standing wave pattern. So you can see right now, this one's going up and down, sending wave pulses down and back again, but then we have constructive and destructive interference, and it actually sets up in a pattern where we have a location right here, where we have constructive interference, and here we have destructive interference. Constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, and it's actually destructive interference at either end as well. And these have specific names. This is called a standing wave pattern. A location of constructive interference is called an antinode. And a location of destructive interference is called a node. So, John, you're right here. How many antinodes right now? Two. Or, what the ends? Um, How many antinodes? Oh, uh, two. Oh, three. Three. One, two, three antinodes right now. How many nodes right now, John? Um, four. Four. There are two and then the ends. Don't miss the ends when you're talking about nodes. And notice three antinodes and four nodes. There are always going to be one more node than antinodes. If I increase the frequency. Now, I do want to do this because it is important that you understand that this only works at certain frequencies. So what I've got right now is a frequency where I'm sending wave pulses down, wave pulses are coming back, and they're all canceling one another out. So it is important to realize that standing waves only work at certain frequencies. But I'll increase the frequency again. And we get another stand, well, it's hard to see, let's do, there we go. So you can see we have another set of standing waves. And then as I increase the frequency, we increase the number of antinodes and nodes. things that happens as we get faster and faster is we get to the point where on the left hand side this is supposed to be keeping an even tension and it will only work if the tension is constant but we get to the point where this starts to move up and down which means our tension is no longer constant and I can't really set up a standing wave. Standing wave. So we had something called a node, which is a location of total destruction interference. Antinode is a location where you have constructive interference. In the stacks, we have a bunch of science stuff. Some of it has been around for decades. Some of it predates Mr. Palmer's life. We have a bunch of film loops, which are like predate the idea of a fast forward and rewind. 
you just press play or stop, and the film just keeps looping over and over again. Uh, one year I decided that out of the 60 or so film loops we, we have, there must be something worthwhile in there. And I found one that I use every year at this particular time. It shows something that I can't quite show on my own here. I don't have quite have the equipment for it. And a couple of years ago, I'd been showing it for several years, a couple of years ago, um, the film strip actually broke. It was a very sad moment. So I took the film strip home, and I took home the, the film loop project projector. I broke open the film strip. I got out an X-Acto knife and some tape, and I taped it back together again. And then I used duct tape to hold the film loop back together. Then I broadcast it on the wall at my house while my kids were taking a bath, and I videotaped it using my digital video camera. And then it broke again. So what I have for you today is a video that was made, a film strip, excuse me, a film loop that was created before I was born that I then digitized for you and then converted to MP4 format. No, actually, I think this is WMV, which I before, but anyway. Uh, oh, and there's no sound actually with the film loop. This, I don't know why, but predated any sort of sound. There's no audio. However, to get you the ambiance, the feel of the film loop, I have the recording, the sound of the film loop so you can enjoy the film loop itself. It's going to be like you were right there. Um, let's see, if you listen carefully, you will be able to hear the guffawing of my children in the background. In the back. Do you feel it? Do you feel the ambiance here? I'll help. Scroll the stop and slow motion. 